Hello. I posted this picture recently. It's a montage of seven images of the same moth and a number of people commented that creating a picture like this must be quite uh, difficult or intricate to achieve. So I thought I'd uh, make a short video just to demonstrate how I created it and to show how easy it is and uh, maybe inspire you to have a go at doing such a thing as well. So you need to start with um, a number of images you want to combine and creating a montage is quite a, a good way of presenting a number of similar images um, particularly when the subject in the frame is is quite small as as here and um, so you can see it's uh, okay it's not all that sharp and uh, quite noisy as I had to use a higher ISO uh, because I wanted the the fastest possible shutter speed to try and capture these uh, fast moving creatures so um, in Lightroom we made uh, a number of uh, adjustments to the image, uh, highlights, shadows, a um, little bit of boost on the red, uh, some noise reduction quite important because of the uh, high ISO and something which uh, not everybody seems to do is this lens correction uh, can make quite a difference to your picture. Uh, chromatic aberration, uh, you get coloured lines, often magenta or cyan lines, particularly where you have areas of very high contrast along an edge, for example. Uh, so just check that. There's nothing to, to lose by doing it. And also enabling the profile correction for the particular lens you're using. Again, with these rather long lenses, there's very little um, optical distortion, uh, usually. Um, but you do sometimes get some vignetting. And if I switch that off and back on again, you can see that there's a definite... Uh, a vignette being corrected uh, around the border. So having made your uh, corrections in Lightroom, the thing to do then is to uh, open all the images in Photoshop. So to do that, right click there, edit in, and then down the bottom there it says open as layers in Photoshop. I've already done that. So as you can see, we can, you can see the seven layers here in the layer palette one on top of the other and as if I switch them off progressively from the top you'll see the uh, different position of the moth in the frame. Now the camera was entirely handheld so I was uh, running around chasing the, the moth although it seems I remained relatively still for these few shots um, so that the uh, things that we can see in the background around the moth give us an idea of how to place each frame relative to the other. And the technique for doing this is having the uh, f bottom frame visible. This is what we can see here, the last picture in the sequence. And then we go we switch on the one previous to that. Um, and of course, that's all we can see. Uh, so to help us position it, what we're going to do, select the layer and then reduce the opacity down just until we can see the layer underneath. So now we're looking through this layer, which the, I've set the opacity just below 40%, and then using the Move tool, so click V on the keyboard, I can move this layer around. Um, now, if you look at the background, you can see that where that grass stem is was probably if the camera stayed in exactly the same position. And the moths um, move from there to there, in the fraction of a second between these two shots. Uh, I don't want them to be touching in the final picture, so I'm just going to move it slightly away uh, like, uh, maybe like that. Okay, um, now the next thing to do is to bring up the opacity back to 100% so we can just see this uh, second layer. And now what I'm going to do is use the lasso tool, or the lasso tool, as we call it, and then just draw a rough outline around the moth. It doesn't have to be very precise at all, but just enough to make sure you have all the entire moth in it. And you can see the marching ant pattern around the moth there. Then we click the layer mask icon and a mask is applied. So this is the mask. The areas that are black tell the computer not to show any of the uh, that image, uh, only show the areas that are white. And so what that gives us, let's just zoom in here, is uh, a moth uh, surrounded by the background that we left included 
in the lasso. So now we just need to tidy that up, which is a very simple job. Select the brush tool, so clicking B on the keyboard or just clicking on the brush tool. Use Always use the softest edge brush for this, zero hardness. And then you can modify the size either with the square brackets on the keyboard um, or in fact I have a dial on my Wacom tablet which is a much easier way of doing it. So we now are just going to increase the area of the black mask and the good thing with uh, this disruptive background or this unstructured background maybe I should say is that this is very easy to do as you can see as I just go over the area around the moth I'm just going over particularly the edges of the selection that we made with the lasso and just clear that away and you can see very quickly the uh, hard edges that were visible disappear and if I just uh, do control zero to make that full size you can see um, there's no obvious trace of the, uh, the fact that that's a selection from the previous frame. So we just add go do exactly the same thing with uh, number three. Uh, reduce the opacity so we can see the position. Use the move tool to move the moth into position which is artistically right. Remember this is about creating uh, a nice picture not necessarily about making a documentary shot so it doesn't really matter that the background doesn't line up exactly increase the opacity make the rough selection with the lasso tool apply the layer mask zoom in and tidy up the mask and uh, I'm not going to bore you by uh, doing this for all the seven layers but that's exactly how the the montage was created and um, just go over to that one there and there you can see this was the final montage uh, I made and you can see the layers there the various components masked off and there we are. That's how to make a montage, um, in this case of seven images, very simple, works well because the, the background is largely unstructured. Obviously if they were identifiable or regular shapes in the background it's a, a bit more challenging and we'd have to make much more careful selections of the subject, but in this case it was very easy. So I hope you found that enjoyable and uh, interesting and that you'll have a go at doing that yourself. Thank you.